Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Untangle 101 webinar series. Uh, today, we'll be discussing how Untangle's NG Firewall solution solves your school's network problems. Uh, my name is Shannon Miles, and I'm part of the product marketing team here, and I'll be your host today. And I have with us Katie Benson, who is our director of sales, who um, I'll be passing shortly. Um, and uh, she'll be doing the demonstration. Uh, just a few housekeeping rules before we get started. Um, if you have any audio issues, please just be sure um, that you select the correct audio preference on the right-hand side. If you do select to dial in and use the phone, um, you will need to use the access code that's provided. Um, just a reminder, um, this is a common question that we get. This webinar is being recorded, so you will have the option to re-watch and revisit areas that you want to come back and follow up on. Uh, we also have a, a few of our team members on today to help answer questions, so please just submit them in the Q&A box. And as always, if we, if we don't end up getting to your question, please just send any questions to sales at untangle.com. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Katie. Awesome. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, everybody, for joining today. We appreciate you taking the time. <clears throat> Hopefully, you will find... Um, benefit in the demo today as well as the just kind of going through how Untangle NG Firewall can uh, really make your life more simple um, in managing your network. Um, so with that said, uh, today's on, on the, today's agenda we have um, what do we do? Uh, I'll kind of touch base on that shortly. Um, what, what are the school network problems that you run into that we face as well as a company in providing a solution for you? What are the problems um, day to day that Untangle can help uh, you know, fix or correct uh, in a, as well as prevent. Um, the, we'll go over the uh, NG Firewall solution as a whole. Um, we'll do a, a short demo um, and, and that really is to touch base on what we can provide you uh, in our solution. Uh, that's not an in-depth overview, it's kind of just a show, um, show and tell if you will of what Untangle um, provides as well as the the interface and kind of the new version 12 that we launched um, early March. Um, you'll get a sneak peek of that as well. So um, last we'll finish up with kind of going over the packages um, that Untangle offers for our schools. We have two um, uh, public sector and a nonprofit complete package that um, you know, schools and organizations like yourselves uh, qualify for. So uh, we'll finish up with that. And again, Shannon mentioned we have um, some staff members answering questions on the back end. Um, so if you have anything specific, feel free to ask it there. Uh, hopefully I will touch on it uh, just shortly in the demo, but if not, uh, we'll follow up afterwards as well. So with that said, um, what is the main, <clears throat> the main problem um, in today's world uh, of, of education and networking and, and what can we do. Um, the main problem that we see is unfortunately most schools like yourself still use legacy web filters at, uh, that are ineffective and inflexible when it comes to allocating uh, network resources, network users, um, the apps and the devices that are connected. Um, you know, how do we protect those as well as the students and staff that are using those devices? Um, Sometimes the out-of-date systems provide only basic block and allow ports uh, and URL-based functionality that sometimes can compromise your SIPA compliance or even your E-rate funding. Um, you know, th those two uh, features can now be at risk if you are not uh, in compliance. So um, a lot of customers are choosing Untangle for the next generation web filtering, which is by def definition includes uh, application control, SSL inspection, and bandwidth management, basically readying your classrooms for the demands of the 21st century. Uh, and we'll kind of go over that. Hopefully you'll see the benefits as we move through. Um, but that really is the problem we are trying to solve here at Entangle. And I think we've done a great job with it thus far. Um, our product continues to grow in leaps and bounds with what we offer. And um, we continue to do that, um, you know, with each version that we release. Um, so what does Untangle do? Um, Untangle's next generation firewall is simple, powerful, it's an all-in-one firewall and unified threat management solution. Uh, it's placed at the edge of your network and at the gateway to the internet. Uh, the NG firewall uh, performs deep packet analysis on all traffic from the appliances. Um, Untangle NG firewall enables you to quickly and easily create the network policies that deliver the perfect balance between security and productivity. 
Uh, it also, uh, Untangle combines unified threat management uh, to address all the key network threats. Uh, including policy management tools to enable you to define, ac define access and control uh, by teachers and students, um, grade level or school-wide. Um, and I'll touch on that just a little bit with the policy-based um, features that we allow uh, within the, the interface. Um, and with industry-leading reports at the end, we'll, we'll kind of touch on that as well, um, you'll have complete visibility into the control of, of what's happening on the network and um, you know, what, what features uh, you need to implement there at your school specifically to protect um, as you move forward day to day. Um, the, we protect, uh, let's see, virtual pipelining, which is uh, basically simply just taking technology, uh, all of the features within our, our offering, um, and ensures that the integra they integrate together seamlessly and per perform optimally for you uh, as the, the customer. Uh, finally, we have the free download. If you're not aware, um, I, I didn't even—I should have mentioned this at the beginning—but we probably do have some Untangle users on the, the session today, um, and we might have people who have not heard of Untangle or are not familiar with the product. Um, the benefit of Untangle is we offer, uh, or the the differentiating um, factor from our competitors is that we offer you a free 14-day trial. Um, you can install that trial on your own hardware. Um, it, it's a full version of the, pack, of the complete package, so all of the features that you'll see in the demo today are, are available to you at no cost uh, if you wanted to do a proof of concept uh, or if you wanted to, to test and trial before pulling uh, a current vendor out or a current solution out, uh, you do have the flexibility to do that uh, risk-free. So um, we'll, we'll kind of touch on that and, and where you can go to get that uh, information as well. Uh, so your next question might be, um, how do I get Untangle? Um, where do I put it and how will it work in my existing network setup? There are really three main questions you need to ask yourself. Uh, the first step would be to decide on a platform. Um, what that means, uh, you can go with an Untangle appliance. Our appliances are the easiest way to get Untangle NG Firewall uh, in your network. They come preloaded with our free package uh, and then you can simply plug them in and set them in your network. Um, you can add individual apps or the complete package, uh, which you as the schools qualify for, uh, discounted pricing um, to basically create your full solution. Um, if, you're, you know, if you're budget constrained um, and you have existing hardware, you can potentially use that. Um, you may be able to run the NG Firewall on your own hardware that you already have, um, but just make sure that they meet the minimum requirements um, that uh, Untangle you know, recommends. The second question you want to ask yourself is, what apps am I going to use and what, I, what do I need specifically in my environment? Um, the best way to experience the full power of the NG Firewall is to select the complete package. Uh, Untangle works synergistically in that most of the, most or all of the features, um, they double dip alongside each other. So uh, for, for an example, web filter, um, if you don't have SSL inspector uh, implemented, what's, what's really the point? You have, um, you know, people can get around, students can get around uh, HTTPS uh, very easily without that uh, involved. So uh, again, the Untangle platform works, works together, works better together, uh, which is why the complete solution is actually going to be your best, uh, best option for the product. And lastly, you want to understand how to deploy the, the Untangle NG firewall in your network. Uh, you'll, you'll need to decide uh, how you want to run it, um, if you want to run it as uh, a router, uh, basically leveraging uh, the powerful network tools, or if you want to run it in transparent bridge mode by dropping it seamlessly behind an existing router. Um, either way, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't change the, the feature set of the product. Uh, the product will basically work the same way, it's just a matter of where you implement it. And here, if you see on the screen, uh, on the left-hand side, you see uh, in a transparent bridge mode, um, and then on the right-hand side, you see in, the, in a router mode. So um, again, if you have an existing firewall in place that you want to continue to use, that's not a problem. Uh, just drop us in in the transparent bridge and continue to use your, your existing firewall. Um, lastly, I do want to note that Untangle um, it is an inline device, meaning only the only, tra only traffic that flows through it will be filtered. Um, and that it, that's an important key because uh, some people are trying to set us up in a proxy or uh, other situations where uh, Untangle has to be, uh, the traffic must flow through the Untangle in order for it to be filtered. So again, you have two options in terms of deployment. 
if you have any questions specifically on how to deploy it, um, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we can, you know, look at your network, uh, work with you on, on kind of where to put Untangle and, and figure out what works best for you. So moving on, a little bit more of, uh, of some problems or some issues that you might run into as IT admin administrators or, you know, network administrators. Um, protecting students from inappropriate web content. Uh, again, I mentioned SSL inspector or HTTPS traffic. Uh, our SSL inspector is what protects, uh, it basically blocks your HTTPS traffic. So um, HTTPS traffic, more and more of the internet traffic is being encrypted using HTTPS, uh, which creates huge blind spots for firewalls. Uh, if you are not familiar with that, or maybe your current vendor does not protect you against HTTPS inspector, uh, HTTPS, HTTPS traffic, excuse me, that's a mouthful. Um, you know that Untangle can help you with that, and uh, we do support it, um, and we do a great job with it. Um, without it, uh, it compromises the ability to analyze traffic, uh, identify threats, and handle policy violations. Uh, the SSL inspector creates a specialized certificate on each client. Uh, this certificate then communicates directly with the gateway, which is then uh, able to decrypt the HTTPS traffic and ST SMTP traffic. So we'll kind of go touch on that just a little bit once we get in the interface. Um, but with all of these features, uh, SIPA compliance, so your Child Internet Protection Act, and I assume everybody on here um, is very knowledgeable with that. Um, there are legal, uh, you know, responsibilities to you as the administrator, to you as the, the principal of the school or the uh, vice president. Uh, principal of the school. Uh, there are legal obligations that we have to protect our students and our children and making sure that um, when they are on campus and, and accessing the internet that they are protected. Uh, Untangle is SIPA compliant as well as we are E-rate. Um, we're able to be funded through E-rate. Um, so you want to make sure that you have all of the steps necessary to comply with those regulations. Um, and you never want to worry about those being compromised at any point. Secondly, you want to grant access rights based on group type. Um, Untangle is a little bit different, and I think the benefit, one of the benefits of Untangle is that we offer uh, policy management. Uh, this allows you to take uh, policies across your entire network um, and break it up into maybe a, an IP group or a group of teachers versus students. Uh, or maybe you want to have strict access for your third graders uh, or your eighth graders um, and then allow you know, to your, your seniors to have full access to certain sites. Uh, of course, that's just an example. Uh, but here, like you see on the, on the screen, uh, you want to allow your K, uh, K through three th third graders um, being blocked from Facebook while your eighth graders are allowed. Um, and you can open up Facebook altogether, or you can use our application control to uh, block specific areas of that, of that site. Uh, and we'll touch on that just in a few minutes as well. Um, and lastly, on this slide, uh, before we move on, uh, maintaining network performance. That, that's probably the most important. Uh, filtering is, is probably second there, but um, keeping a network up and running is, is the most important aspect of, of what Untangle can do for you. And, um, you know, you, you, don't want, you want to make sure that the bandwidth that you have um, here in the States, uh, in other countries, bandwidth is very expensive. Uh, and you want to make sure that the bandwidth that you've paid for is allocated across your entire network and not being used by just maybe three or five individuals or, or uh, devices that are streaming or playing games, uh, those types of things. That really is going to uh, negatively affect your students and your teachers who are trying to uh, be productive with their online education uh, you know, uh, efforts. Um, so maintaining your network's performance, uh, continuing to keep everything in line, up, up to date, um, and accessible to everybody there at your school is, is of utmost, utmost importance. And Untangle is, uh, we take that very seriously and, and we can help you with that. So uh, just to lastly, before we step into the demo, I believe is what we have up next. Um, again, web, web filter and SSL inspector work great together. Uh, they are going to protect your students from inappropriate web content. Uh, the policy management and application control, as I mentioned on the previous slide, allows you to set policies based on groups as well as set rights um, within the website or the URL itself. Uh, and lastly, that bandwidth control is going to allow you to maintain uh, your network's performance over, you know, day to day or, or um, you know, hour by hour that you're on campus. 
So with that said, um, I would like to pop into the demo. Um, Shannon, do we have any questions at this point that have come up? Uh, no, not really. I think we're, we're good so far. Okay, great, great. Well, I'll continue to move on again. If you have specific questions, uh, please feel free to use the chat box. We do have some great um, uh, staff members, uh, knowledgeable staff members online that can, can provide answers to you. Uh, if we don't get to them again, we'll, we'll try to get back uh, after the session's over. Um, so let's hop into the demo so that I can show you what Untangle can do. I know I've been talking about it for the last few minutes, but let's show you what we can do. Um, and for those who are not familiar with Untangle, what I've done is I've gone to untangle.com, I've scrolled over the NG firewall, and I've clicked on the live demo server. Um, this is available to everyone at any point. Um, so once we leave the session today um, outside of the recording, you can play around with the online demo at any point. If you have specific questions or you want to look at the categories, maybe the web filter offers, uh, you want to check out this really sweet dashboard that we just launched uh, last month, um, you know, this is available to you if, straight from the website. So feel free to check it out. Uh, with that said, let's talk about the, what you see on your screen here. Um, this is our awesome dashboard. We are really excited about it. Um, it's a great new addition to our, to our overall, um, you know, Untangle experience. Uh, it was launched with version 12. Um, some of you might ar actually already have it if you've recently deployed Untangle or re recently purchased Untangle. Um, others who are running uh, Untangle from the past, uh, maybe the upgrade has not hit your box yet. It is on the way, I promise. Um, and we're, we're still in the midst of doing a slow roll, so maybe it just hasn't hit your box yet. This is a huge upgrade to our product, and we want to make sure that everybody is positively affected by this uh, as we move along through the version. So um, as you see on the screen, you've got all of these different widgets. Uh, these are all the, the default widgets that, we, that we've selected for you uh, to be able to access information on your box. Um, and, and the benefit, uh, unlike other vendors out there, um, is we allow you to fully customize what you want to see on this, on this screen. Uh, other vendors that I am aware of um, do, you know, provide the information that they want you to have, where Untangle allows you to have access to, you know, whatever information you want to put on here. Um, so as you can see, as I scroll down, this is live traffic from our demo site. Um, it's, it's updating real time. Um, it's basically taking the information that's, the, the traffic that's flowing through the box um, and, and just updating um, the dashboard instantly. So, um, with that said, you can uh, move these widgets around. You can take reports, custom reports, and we'll touch on that at the end, um, and create those into widgets. If you wanted to manage kind of what's on this page or where it's, where it's being reflected on the page, you simply can just move the, the items around, uh, move it to the top if it's of more importance to you, maybe bandwidth control and, uh, you know, total amount of bandwidth being used over the entire network or uh, websites being accessed. Maybe Facebook is always a problem area for you all um, at your schools and you want to make sure that if anybody's accessing Facebook at any point, you have visibility to that through your dashboard. Um, again, these are the default widgets that we've created for you, uh, but it is fully customizable and you can remove and add as you need. Um, so that's a really cool feature. Um, so again, this is the main dashboard that you'll see when you log into the Untangle interface. Uh, we've moved things around just a little bit, so now you have your apps tab over here. And this is really the, the, the product in a nutshell. Uh, this is our virtual rack. Um, it, it houses all of our modules that, are, that you know, um, create the package that we offer today called the complete package. Um, you've got your web filtering at the top. You've got your virus blocker, spam blocker, web cache, bandwidth control. Uh, SSL inspector, which I touched on earlier, application control the same. Um, you've got a captive portal, the firewall feature. Let's touch on the firewall just for a second um, because I talked about the, the way to deploy Untangle. Um, the firewall is actually included um, in the Untangle instance. So when you download Untangle, you can utilize the firewall functionality or you can turn it off and utilize us in a transparent bridge and uh, let us be the filtering device for you. Uh, it, it's, it's basically your call. Uh, just keep in mind you might have a, <clears throat> a, another vendor that you use for your firewall uh, and you might be able to uh, you know, compile your network um, configurations into one uh, and possibly replace what you have so that you're, you're working all with Untangle. Uh, everything's in an all-in-one solution here for you uh, versus kind of going back and forth between two um, you know, instances. 
Again, the uh, services at the bottom al are allocated to all individuals or all IP addresses throughout the, entang the Untangle, uh, and it's just a matter of how you want to deploy those as we go through. Um, so what I'd like to do is start off with the web filter. I think this is the heart and soul of Untangle, um, and it really is the MVP in my eyes. Um, it really gives you a, a lot of access to um, not only looking at kind of what's happening on your network, but uh, restricting access and blocking categories based on um, whatever categories are, are necessary there at your school. Uh, if you click on the, the block categories tab here, you'll see 140 different categories that we, we have designated um, with our third party uh, vendor. Uh, they, they dynamically update this, or it is dynamically updated. Uh, if you have um, new websites coming online, they're, they're automatically added to our database. Uh, and then pushed out to everybody who benefit, you know, who uses Untangle, which benefits all. Um, so as you see here, you've got some checkboxes, um, one next to anonymizers, you've got some next to botnets, uh, social media, child abuse images. Those are the default that we here at Untangle feel that uh, the majority of those wanting filtration uh, are probably going to need those checked. Um, it's as easy as unchecking it if you don't and rechecking it if you do, or just adding whichever checkboxes you need. Um, I think I would do you a disservice if I didn't explain the block versus flag here. So let's go over that for just a second. Um, blocking is just that. It blocks, you know, if somebody tries to access a site, it, it gives them a block page. Um, but what I always like to tell people coming new to Untangle is um, maybe you think something's happening on your network and you're not just sure, uh, you're not 100% sure what's causing issues. Uh, what I always tell my new customers is uh, maybe you should flag some issues, maybe flag alcohol or flag... Uh, you know, this is banking or uh, social networking, shopping, dating, whatever the case is, just for hypothetical situations. Um, what that will do is it will, it, in the reports here, which actually is located in, in, in each of the features, um, it will give you access to what's being blocked as well as what's being flagged. Uh, from a customer or an endpoint experience, um, it, it flows just as it normally would. So they don't know that they're being tracked. Uh, they don't necessarily know that uh, there's an issue with kind of the traffic that's flowing from their IP address or their device, um, but you as the network admin can then see what's actually happening and then make it, make changes based on the real traffic. Um, I think that's a huge um, plus with Untangle, um, and, and you can basically kind of be in the background um, just doing some diagnostic testing uh, for two weeks, and you can do that with your 14-day trial that I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, flag lots of sites or flag lots of categories so that you can make uh, your changes to your network settings as needed. Um, th these again are the categories that we offer. If you want to add your own block sites, you can do that here. Um, it's just as simple as entering the, e the URL here and then block or flag as I just mentioned. Um, if you do block or flag and you put a description here, when they get a block page, this description is, is, is what's going to show. So maybe it says this is outside of our uh, student handbook or cannot be accessed um, in violation of, you know, a student act or something like that. Uh, that's how you would enter those block sites there. Um, if you wanted to block uh, file types or MIME types, you have the ability as well within our web filter. Uh, maybe Microsoft has uh, pushed out a new update or uh, iTunes has pushed out a new update or whatever the case is and you want to be able to block file types, um, maybe EXE or PDFs from being downloaded in your network. Uh, we are aware that the, the new CryptoLocker um, breach has actually come through Dropbox and maybe you want to deny access to being able to, um, you know, download from specific um, file types. Uh, that's a huge benefit as well. MIME types are the same thing. You, you basically have your categories here. Uh, you can remove these, add, add as you see necessary in terms of what you, uh, PDFs uh, and the like, so documentation or audio video. Um, you would add in and delete there. Block sites are, and vice versa, you have past sites. So if you want to specifically ha add past sites to your, your filtering categories, you can do that from here. Um, past clients are, are maybe you have a principal or an exec um, level individual who doesn't necessarily want filtration on their device. Uh, I'm not sure if that's you know anybody on this call, but maybe it is of importance to some of you. Um, you want to be able to pass a specific IP address, you would just add that client here uh, based on that. And you can do um, pass your IP range. So 
let's just touch on the licensing. So I untangle um, the, the bands and the licensing is based on IP address. Um, but IP addresses would, would consist of desktops, laptops, mobile devices, uh, Chromebooks, um, Android devices, that type, sort of thing. Printers, faxers, scanners, uh, VoIP phones, those um, don't, count, don't take up a seat. So what you could do is pass, um, pass an IP range if you've got your printer set up on an IP range and you can enter that here. Um, those will just remove those devices from both your license count as well as filtering from Untangle. Lastly, let's touch on the advance before we hop into the reports. Um, I think one key note here is actually um, maybe you have uh, your, your teachers use Khan Academy or your teachers use an educational website that um, tends to be blocked, you know, uh, most of the time or it comes up as a flagged inappropriate site. Um, but you want to allow access um, without being bothered 500 times a day. Uh, what you can do is actually set up um, passwords. So you can uh, take your teachers, uh, add them in, and you would require a password if they got a block page. Um, and you can customize this based on maybe, um, you know, change it weekly or uh, daily for these, for these staff members. Um, if they got a block page, they, they would just enter in the password, um, and then it would allow them access to those sites. Um, this is a huge uh, help to you as the IT administrator. Uh, all traffic, again, flowing would still show that they got a block page, but that it used a, a password, uh, a bypass password, um, to get through to that site. So if anything is used inappropriately, or uh, if maybe that password has gotten out to some students, and the students are now accessing sites that they shouldn't be with this password, um, you, have you have visibility to that from the reports. And with that said, let's check on the reports here within WebFilter. Um, with version 11, we launched a huge upgrade to our reports, and um, it, it's, been, uh, it's been great to see the, the feedback we've received. Um, we, have, we spent a lot of time, Dirk, uh, our CTO and founder of the, of the company uh, and the product, spent a lot of time with creating these reports in addition to our engineering team to kind of pull their ideas together with what is important to be able to see with our reports. So if I was to just look on um, web usage uh, blocked, let's check on that because I think that's important to note. Um, these are the default reports that we have within the interface, uh, but again, you can create your own reports. Uh, you can add conditional formatting down here based on um, usage or a specific user, or, um, and then that information would be pulled based on, on the specific uh, protocols that you have in place. So as you can see, as you click through, you can change uh, change the graphs, and these reports are within the interface. Um, they're the, within the web filter app, and as we move along through bandwidth control and application control, those reports are still accessible to you from within the interface and within that app. Um, so that's a cool new feature um, that that has been helpful uh, to a lot of our customers um, using Untangle, and those coming to Untangle are, are pretty excited about the what they can get with these reports. Uh, really think outside the box, and if you if you want the information, we can probably, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time get it for you. Um, it would just be maybe a matter of creating a report that gives you that, that detail. Um, so you can just click through here. Again, here's the top flagged categories, as I was mentioning, block versus flag earlier, um, and you've got here. Um, so now that this has popped up, let's touch on that. So if you've got a graph, and this might not be the best one, but let me look here. Maybe it's by request. Let me see. Give that a second to load. So yeah, here we go. Um, so here's a, a pie chart um, of specific uh, categories. So music, news, uh, food and restaurant. But you're a school and you don't really care about these other sites that are being accessed. Uh, maybe you just want to remove the music portion of that. Uh, or you want to move remove the online shopping or you know government sponsored sites. You literally just uncheck the, the block or the color tab over here and it recreates the graph for you in, in real time. So you're maybe only in, interested in pornography uh, or maybe news or software technology, that sort of thing, hypothetically speaking. Um, you can create the graph that you want. Uh, then you can download that graph and send it to um, yourself or you can send it to an administrator saying, okay, hey, look, here's what's really happening on our network. Uh, we're having an influx in traffic to um, uh, Facebook or, you know, uh, whatever the case is. You, you'd be able to tell that here. 
Um, so that's a cool feature within the, the, the reports. Again, fully customizable. You can create whatever apps, or excuse me, uh, reports you need um, and have those sent out to you. So let's go back to our default rack. Get out of the web filter. Um, and, and let's just chat about a few other um, modules I think would be beneficial to you. Uh, virus Blocker, Virus Blocker Lite are always um, great additions to your network. Uh, we, we do uh, recommend that you have both uh, in, in line. Um, they do use two separate um, uh, building blocks and both are actually run against in terms of any viruses that come on. Um, so we, we always recommend that you have both in line uh, and on. Uh, it's never bad to have a double layer of protection for viruses. Spam blocker is the same thing. Um, additional uh, protection for you um, at the uh, email level. Uh, being able to see what's coming in and what's going out and, and what's being protected. Um, let's move on to bandwidth control. Uh, actually, let's let's skip around. Let's go to SSL Inspector first, and then we'll 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 touch on bandwidth control because SSL Inspector again goes right in hand with the web filter, and what you can do with that. So. Um, a, a lot of students are, are very smart these days and they can find ways to get around certain, um, certain areas of the internet. Uh, HTTPS traffic is, is one of the big ones. Um, so having SSL inspector enabled allows you to uh, set up specific rules based on uh, those specific rules based on those um, protocols that you need to, to filter. Um, so again, https.facebook.com uh, uh, or http.facebook.com. Again, uh, we protect on that. Um, you will have to download a root certificate. There are some easier ways to, um, you know, get these pushed out to your devices. Uh, once you do it the first time, uh, it's pretty much taken care of. Uh, but what I would recommend is, um, you know, maybe reach out to our techs here at Untangled to, to get some assistance with that. Uh, we also have a great forum community, uh, an open source community that has, um, majority of them have installed the product, used it for years, and, and kind of found uh, workarounds in, in terms of implementing. Um, so just keep in mind, SSL Inspector will have some issues, or not some issues, will have some time. Uh, we'll need some time to, to get deployed, um, but we feel that it's a great product, and um, you'll, be, you'll be pleasantly surprised with the outcome of, of what's being protected on your network. Again, your reports are within this, this interface here, um, so you can look at all sessions being viewed, all sessions being blocked, uh, flagged, that sort of thing. Uh, and again, all of that is pop populated here. Uh, this is the demo box here, so I don't believe we actually, uh, SSL Inspector was actually disabled here, so it's not even on. Um, but you would turn it on here, and then your reports would, f would fill based on that. Shannon, how are we doing on questions? Are we getting some good ones coming through? Yeah, our... our, uh, our our helpful tech guys are busy answering questions, so keep them coming in. Uh, they kind of range all over the place, so there doesn't seem to be an overwhelming number of one question. Okay, cool. Um, so it seems sometimes that when we get on these sessions, a lot of the questions are specific to your environment alone, um, which could benefit everybody, but in, in, in an essence of keeping everybody on, on track, um, we'll, we'll keep those questions to um, you know the chat boxes and uh, continue on to, to move through the product. So uh, that's SSL Inspector, um, and, and it works in conjunction with WebFilter. Um, let's touch on bandwidth control. I know we, we mentioned this, or I mentioned this earlier today, um, and bandwidth control is a great feature. It allows you to take your entire um, network and either prior, prioritize traffic based on um, the need to have uh, priorities on sites um, or visibility to kind of what's actually happening. So let's think of a use case for bandwidth control. You've got um, maybe testing. I, I'm actually from Virginia originally, but we have SOL testing on the East Coast. And um, for about two weeks out of the year, um, those testing sites for those SOL tests um, need the highest priority for these students to be able to take their tests. Um, what bandwidth control would do in that situation is it would allocate you know, whatever percentage of bandwidth um, or, or of network accessibility to um, specific sites uh, for a period of time. So maybe the testing is from uh, 8 to 12 daily, Monday through Friday, and you want all, uh, you know, the priority of the traffic being focused on those specific SOL types, uh, test sites. A bandwidth control would allow you to do that. And then if you thought from an overall day-to-day -day perspective, um, maybe you have, um, you know, 
the academic um, website or the calendar or um, maybe your specific sites that are used for educational purposes only, uh, maybe those have a higher priority than, uh, you know, just your day-to-day -day, um, URLs and websites. Uh, you can set up penalty boxes for anybody who is um, misusing uh, the network. Uh, or if they've reached a, a, a capacity or a threshold that you've set within the interface, um, you can set up penalty boxes. And what that really does is it basically just slows that specific IP's network traffic uh, and nobody else is, um, you know, at risk. Um, so if Jimmy down the hall wants to continue to try to access Facebook on his iPhone in the middle of math class, then you can take Jimmy's iPhone and uh, slow the network traffic for his device. Uh, and, and inevitably, he would kick himself off after not being able to access Facebook, you know, at, with three or four tries. Um, so you're not doing anything. You've basically set this up uh, based on the reports and the, and the alerts that you're getting um, that you've set up within the interface. And that's just a, a use case, but there are, there are many different ways that bandwidth can help you. Uh, those are just two examples of, of how schools kind of run into situations all the time um, and how Untangle can, can help you with that. Um, again, quotas I talked about, if you, if you want to set quotas based on, um, you know, IP addresses uh, or you have your sessions here listed um, and, and you want to review those. So, as I mentioned before in the previous two features, reports are accessible within the feature itself. Um, so, maybe you want to look at your overall bandwidth usage. And then you see, oh, well, this is a huge spike here at uh, 1 in the afternoon. Um, well, what's going on here? Or maybe it's... Maybe you know something's happening or, or maybe it's your normal day-to-day -day bandwidth is down here and then all of a sudden there's a spike here. Well, you can take that time frame and look at the reports based on that uh, specific time and you can visit. Uh, you can see what's actually being visited and what's actually causing that spike in your traffic. So let's head back to the interface. A couple more. How are we doing on time, Shannon? Do we have a few more minutes to call? Yeah, we're okay. running okay. Okay, great. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm not keeping anybody too long. Um, so application control, um, huge feature, great asset to uh, the Untangle interface uh, and, and the overall product in a nutshell. Um, applications, you have a list here, there's hundreds. Um, and with these applications, what this does, uh, I always like to explain kind of a use case for the, for the, the modules themselves. And in this case, maybe you have um, you, you want to allow Facebook access on your, on your campus, um, but you don't want to allow gaming or IM messaging or um, chat, uh, you know, posting videos or sharing videos on Facebook. Um, so within Facebook, you can actually, um, whoops, sorry, let me do that. You can actually uh, allocate specific areas of the, of the site um, and restrict other access. Um, so I'm trying to get to Facebook down here. Let's see. So here you go. You've got events. You've got Messenger. You've got uh, posting, searching, video chats, um, uh, all those different areas within the application or within the URL um, can be managed with our application control. Again, Facebook has always seems to be the, the problem child these days, just given the, the amount of time that we as, um, <laughs> we as employees as well as students and, and staff spend on it. But... Um, there are use cases where Facebook can actually be uh, beneficial. Maybe a teacher is actually teaching on social media um, and the, the you know, downside of it or the, the positive side of, of having social networking um, interactions. Um, so maybe you want to have access to certain areas of Facebook where others can be uh, restricted. Application control can help you with that. Um, maybe you use Google um, and you want to block YouTube, which is always a challenging um, you know, thing these days. Unfortunately, Google has pulled the access to YouTube for schools. Um, they no longer support it, so Untangle unfortunately had to take it out of our product uh, with the last couple of it, uh, versions. But, um, you know, there are certain areas that you can, can still allow maybe Google Mail where you still block YouTube. Uh, but overall, it's still a Google um, URL and Google still owns it. So it, it gets a little bit tricky with YouTube and um, UltraSurf. Uh, BitTorrent, but you do have the abilities to block certain areas of the of the traffic and uh, and kind of see what's actually happening uh, within the application or the URL level. 
So as you can see, you can move down here with all the different uh, the names or the, the applications themselves. Um, there are a ton here, and, and uh, I highly recommend maybe taking a second to look through this on your own time um, so that you can see where uh, the benefits are um, with different applications and what you can do. Instagram's on here again, uh, a lot of social media um, categories, um, networking, that sort of thing, messaging, web services, and the like. So, um, and if you wanted to create your own rules based on, um, you know, the ports or the ports that are being accessed, um, you know, there are specific reasons or, or scenarios where uh, port hopping happens or port forwarding happens. Um, maybe you want to look at the applications and see, um, you know, what ports are being accessed um, the most. And then you can look at the traffic based on those ports. Um, and again, you can add and remove what you need within, within the Untangle. And lastly, reports again, I know I've kind of beat this to death, but it really is a cool feature when you have the application and then you're able to, to view traffic based on um, that specific feature. Um, and again, you have uh, Untangle does integrate with Active Directory and Radius, so if you do have either of those implemented there at your school, uh, you would use our directory connector, which then would allow you to see um, names, usernames versus IP addresses. Um, and when somebody logs in uh, with with a uh, username, then the traffic would be uh, filtered and reported on based on that user and the priorities or the policies that you have set up for that specific user. So you can really customize your reports to uh, Jimmy Smith that was accessing Facebook during math class down the hall. Um, you can send a report um, to your principal or to whoever's in charge of making decisions based on certain policies. Um, and saying, okay, here's the issue we're running into. Uh, I know that this is Jimmy's iPhone. I know that this is Jimmy's iPad. Um, and here's the traffic that's being, um, you know, uh, visited through his through his device. So that's really going to give you, the IT administrator, as well as the principals, the the information that they need to make decisions based on the network, uh, and and what's uh, you know what needs to be changed or modified based on that. So I went over Policy Manager. That basically allows you to set up channels within Untangle uh, based on teacher versus student. Um, and if we just take a second to look, um, up, this is the default rec, so everybody is um, being you know, forced through the, the traffic here. But if we were to create a separate policy rack, um, it, it would allow you to take maybe the teacher rack and then create policies based on those specific users. So I just wanted to reiterate kind of what Untangle allowed you to do uh, from one instance. So you've got your rack here, and then you can create multiple racks within your Untangle interface to be able to, to use um, you know, the restrictions or the, the accessibility through uh, Untangle's interface. And then let's see here. Again, we can spend all day on here. IPSec is another, one, another feature I think that a lot of schools can use for remote uh, access. Um, we use XSoft and L2TP as our uh, integrators. And uh, IPSec really allows you to set up remote access for devices that maybe would leave campus that are provisioned by the school. Um, so you've got your Chromebooks, you've got your um, you know, computers, laptops that go home with teachers, or maybe they're doing a, an educational seminar and a teacher sends home an, an, a Chromebook with a student and gives them a, um, an assignment. Those Chromebooks then leave your campus, but what happens when they leave those campuses? Um, you still want to be able to restrict act access to certain sites uh, while still protecting the student as well as any other family members that might potentially access uh, the internet through that device uh, when you're not there. Um, so IPSec VPN allows you to set up a full secure tunnel back to Untangle and then report um, on the, the traffic that's been um, visited as well as set up policies to restrict access for other areas. And I think that kind of covers a lot of the, um, the main features that would affect a school in your situation. Um, I hopefully have given you kind of an overview of what Untangle can do for you. Uh, again, there, there are multiple different things within all of these modules that, that weren't covered today. Um, so if you have a specific question or you have a specific need, um, please reach out to us um, so that we can help you uh, and maybe touch on something specific to your network and how Untangle would, would help with that. Um, and with that said, I will go ahead and close up the demo for now, but I will bring back up the, the slideshow so Shannon can continue on with the, um, the packages and, and such. We'll close out for today.
All right, thanks, Katie. Um, hopefully that uh, demonstration helped showcase um, how schools are really utilizing Untangle's NG Firewall solution to help solve many of the problems that they face in terms of protecting their students, keeping bandwidth up, and, and providing different policies for different users. Um, as Kitty mentioned earlier, we do have some uh, special packages for um, schools, whether you're uh, a public school or a private school. Um, both packages are our complete package. Um, we, we have either a free package or a complete package. The complete package consists of everything in our application library as well as any applications that we release in the future. Um, the only thing that's different is that they are at a discounted price um, depending on what type of uh, school you are. Public sector is for um, state qualifying state, local governments, and public schools and libraries. Nonprofit is for not-for-profit institutions, NGOs, private schools and religious organizations. Um, you can find information on our website um, to figure out uh, you know, what works best for you, what you qualify under, and the pricing there. Or if you want to give us a call, just you know, reach out to us at salesofentangle.com to figure out what solution is and package is best for you. Um, do you have anything to add to that, Katie? No, I think um, I, I think that pretty much sums up what what we offer for you. Again, the complete package is all of those features that you just saw within the demo there, um, and uh, that that would be included. So I'm happy to discuss any options that you're looking at. Uh, feel free to call uh, sales at untangle. Excuse me, call us or email sales at untangle right. for any questions. Um, so there was a lot of questions that just came in on pricing. Again, please just visit our website. Um, all of our uh, pricing is is there. We don't hide any pricing. We don't make you call us. However, if you want to get a very specific package for your environment or for your network, give us a call, reach out to us, and we can set up a package that works best for you. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, you can contact us at salesandentangle.com, our phone number. Um, Katie showed us everything on the free demo, which everyone is welcome to go on. Uh, we do have a couple upcoming webinars coming up, um, so you can look at our website for that. Um, as you can see, uh, we had a lot of people were asking about reports, so next week we have a reports webinar, so feel free to register for that. Um, and then in May, we have a uh, one of our applications uh, we'll be demoing um, SSL Inspector, and uh, as Katie mentioned, you know, we, we have a lot of uh, resources online. We have the wiki, which I was sending to a few of you asking questions about specific apps. Everything is here, everything you could possibly need in terms of how to set it up, um, you know, how do I customize things. And if that's not enough, we have the forums, which is an open area for you to go on and ask questions. Um, we have our engineering and support team on 24-7 answering questions. So if you have um, a very specific use case, you can ask questions. Um, you, someone might have already asked that question, so you can go on and look there. Um, we provide all these resources for you. And if that doesn't work, you can always contact us at support or salesandtingle.com. So um, just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Again, if we didn't get to your question, please just reach out to us or post them on the forums. And uh, we hope to see you next time. Thanks, Katie, so much for the, the presentation and the demo. I um, hope everyone enjoyed it and got their questions answered. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, everyone.